Hello everyone, this is Professor Keen once again. We're talking about Pascal's Treatise on Fluids. This is from A Student's Guide, Chapter 16. And I'm in the middle of a lecture talking about how Pascal argued that all of the effects that had previously been attributed to nature, nature's abhorrence or hatred of a vacuum can be better understood by recognizing that our atmosphere has weight. That is, we live under a sea of air. So I had talked about uh, how it is difficult to open a bellows uh, when it's sealed because the weight of the air is pushing on it. I also talked about how a smooth glass slide is difficult to, like a microscope slide, is difficult to lip, lift up off of a smooth surface. Remember, this is something that Galileo had talked about back in his dialogues in the earlier in the semester. Um, Pascal is now explaining that that's because of the weight of the air pushing down on top of it. Uh, so we are at his third example. So let's look at number three. Um, this is when he's talking about a syringe. So for example, uh, imagine that we have a bucket. Now I'm going to get my color editors out here. This color editor, I'll move over to here. And this, I'll move over to here. Um, so if we have this bucket, and let's suppose that we fill this bucket with water. And then we take a syringe, a thin needle, and we dip it in there. So I'll draw a syringe with a little plunger. So here's our plunger. And we grab the plunger and we move it up in this direction. We all know what's going to happen. This water is going to get sucked up into this region. So you're going to get water getting sucked up into here. And why is this happening? Well, it's because nature abhors a vacuum, right? And it doesn't want a vacuum in here. And so that is why the water gets sucked up. Well, how does Pascal explain this? He says, no, technically speaking, nothing sucks. You can quote me on that. What's really happening is that we live under this atmosphere of air. And so we live under this atmosphere of air, all these air molecules out here, this has weight, and it's pushing down on the surface here, that's the weight of the air, is pushing down. And when you move this up, well, what's happening, there's no air inside of the syringe to push down, but there is air out here pushing down. And so that air out here is pushing the water up into the syringe. So in other words, the syringe draws the water upwards due to the weight of air, not due to the abhorrence of a vacuum. Okay, um, and how, you know, he goes on to continue to explain this scenario. Um, he says, well, what if we have another bucket? I'll draw another bucket. You know, I'll tell you what, I'm going to try to conserve space here. Let's erase some of this right here. And let's suppose we had another bucket. I'll draw a bucket down here. And let's suppose that we have a smaller bucket inside of it. You'll see where I'm going with this in just a moment. And a tube, a little glass tube in here like this. And let's suppose that we were to fill this smaller bucket with mercury, liquid mercury. So this is liquid mercury in here. And this liquid mercury is, you know, this tube is open on both ends of it. So it's open on this end and open on the bottom. So the mercury is not going up into there, except it's kind of level at the top here. It's level with this. So there's a little bit of mercury in the bottom and mercury in there. Well, how can we make this mercury get pushed up into the tube? Well, what we could do is we could take water and we could pour it into the larger vessel. So let's imagine we take a beaker like this, and we fill it with water repeatedly, and we dump the water into this region. So it falls down into here, and it keeps filling it up like this until we have water up to right here. Now, mercury is heavier than water, so the mercury stays in this tub. But now what's happening is the weight of this water is pushing down on the surface of the mercury, and that causes that mercury 
to be pushed up into this tube. It's not going to be pushed up as far as the water is. In fact, you can probably guess how far it's going to be up compared to the height of the water. Can you guess? I'll wait a moment and see if you can guess it. So if we were to draw an arrow representing the, the height of the water, so this is the height of the water, and I'm going to draw another arrow here. I'm going to do some erasing for a second, get something out of the way, move this. I'll re... And I'll draw a couple of lines here representing this is the height of the mercury. Height of the mercury. You can probably guess that if the height of the water is, let's say, 14 inches, the height of the mercury is going to be 1 inch. That is, the height of the water is going to be 14 times the height of the mercury. Why is the mercury going up into here? Well, it's not because it's getting sucked up. It's because it's being pushed up by the weight of the water. Similarly here, when you're drawing this up, it's not because you're sucking the water up. Rather, it's the weight of the air that's pushing it up. So you can see what Galileo is doing here. He's using our common sense understanding of how water pushes on things and then drawing an analogy with air and saying air likewise pushes on things and pushes them up. Okay, so that is number three. Let's go on and talk about his fourth experiment or his fourth thought experiment. Um, here, I'll just write it out first. He says that an inverted tube of water I'll do this one kind of quickly. Well, maybe I won't. An inverted tube of water does not drain provided the opening is small. I can say more about that in a moment. Provided the opening is small enough. And this is due to the weight of the air that supports the water. Okay, so let's draw. You've all done probably something similar, seen something similar to this. So let's suppose we have a tube and it's closed at the top and it's open at the bottom. And if you, um, let's suppose you maybe kind of turn this over for a moment and fill it with water and put your finger over it, then invert it. You'll probably notice that the water does not pour out, does not pour out. Why does the water not pour out? Well, it's because we live under a huge ocean of air and this air is all pushing down. And at this level, there's some pressure of the air and the air in fact is pushing up on the bottom. So let me, I like to use orange lines for some notation like this. So what happens is the air force is um, pushing up on the water and it's supporting it up inside of it. So it's it's really being pushed up into there by the air. If it were to try to fall down, maybe you'd have a little region of vacuum right in here, but nothing's pushing down on it there. And so the air here is pushing it up inside. This kind of thing also happens. Let me draw a line here to divide out stuff. This also happens with, uh, I think Pascal mentions like a wine cask. Well, wine cask is usually brown. Let me make it a brown wine cask. So here's a cask full of wine, and it prob probably has some kind of spigot that sticks out the side. Okay, uh, and this is full of some nice wine. Like this. And you probably notice that even if you open the valve, the wine is not going to pour out unless you punch a hole in the top. Why does the wine not pour out? Well, it's because, once again, we live under an ocean of air and the air is pushing up on the bottom and holding the wine up in there. And so the only way you can get the wine to come out is if you open up a little hole in the top, then the air rushes into there, pushes down on the top, and then the, water, the wine will pour out. So this, this idea that the air has weight is able to explain this kind of situation as well. Let's talk about Pascal's experiment number five. So water can be siphoned. And this is due to the weight of air, not due to hatred of vacuum. according to Pascal. What do we mean by this? 
Well, let's suppose that you have a pool in your backyard that is full of water. And before winter comes, you want to drain your pool. So what do you do? You take a garden hose and you fill it with water. And then you take one of the ends of the garden hose and you stick it in the pool and the other end you put on the ground like this. And as long as you were careful and you primed it, that is you put water in the tube to begin with, what's going to happen is the water is going to pour out right there and you're going to be siphoning the water out of your pool. Now, to understand this takes a little bit more work, and Pascal spends quite some time explaining this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to not explain this right away. I'm going to come back to this in the next lecture where I can treat it with a little bit more care. Uh, but let me just say that it's going to arise. Part of the explanation is going to be due to, well, the explanation is going to be due to the weight of the air pushing down right here and pushing the water out. So I'll come back to this where we can treat it with a little bit more care. But let me just bypass the rest of that for now. I'll talk about that in the next lecture. Um, point six, I'll just breeze through the last few kind of quickly, is that the weight of the air causes welts, dare I say hickeys. Okay, so on your, on your flesh, it's because the weight of the air is pushing you, um, pushing on your flesh. So I'll just leave it at that. I won't go too much into that. Uh, number seven, the weight of the air makes suction cups work. Suction cups work. Let me drag this over to here. Actually, let me just get rid of that. Make suction cups work. Okay, so if you have a suction cup, you might think, well, the suction cup um, is adhered to a surface, be a surface. Maybe it's because nature abhors a vacuum. You know, here's your surface like this. You attach a suction cup to it. Well, what's really happening there? It's not that nature abhors a vacuum. Rather, the air, the weight of the air is pushing on the top, provided this is a nice smooth surface and no air can get underneath, no air can push it up. And so that weight of the air holds the suction cup to the surface. Um, one interesting experiment you can do is you can put this whole thing in a bell jar. You can take a bell jar, which is basically a jar um, that has a little opening that you can pump the air out of it. This is a glass bell jar, an inverted jar. And if you stick a suction cup to the surface right here, so it's stuck down, and then you pump the air out, you're going to notice that the suction cup releases. It's because the air is no longer pushing down on the top. It's kind of a neat experiment you can do. And one of the final points that Pascal makes is that the weight of the air allows infants to nurse. OK, this is on page 212. He talks about this. And can I do this? I guess I'm going to do it. OK. so. There's a breast. It's the only time I'll ever draw a breast in a physics lab, I suppose. Um, but the idea is that the weight of the air, of course, the mother um, lives under an ocean of air. Okay, And what happens is that the weight of the air is pushing on the breast like that, and it causes the milk to squirt out. Right. So that there you have it.